Hey guys, Brandon Dawson here at the Beat Dawson Show. I've got my buddy Daniel here joining me today, and I'm going to let him introduce himself, and then we're going to talk about why he's here and why it's relevant to you. Thanks, Brandon. So uh, my name is Daniel Prober. I am one of the, the co-founders of WowMe. And WowMe is a business that's really gone over a lot of transitions over the past five or six years. But really what we are is a, a company that takes sales individuals or even business owners and we turn them into influencers by really giving them social media programming. Of course, there's a lot of bells and whistles that go with that, but that's just kind of like the overview. And, you know, I did a podcast a while back, probably earlier part of the year, and and I spoke about this at some conferences. Uh, Bain Capital had their annual event where they had experts from all over the world come into town and talk about digital strategies and the importance mm -hmm. of digital. And from Am all the way from Amazon to Walmart, I mean, they had the big guys there, right? And And what those businesses concluded is that when they operate online and they operate in a four wall, they have a physical location somewhere, they get an exponential growth in their business. But when they just do one or the other, they get less impact. Then they had the micro markets talking about trends in healthcare and small business and all those things. And Bain came out and said, if you're a small business in a community, they refer to that as a micro market. So macro market is global, right? It's, it's the big market. Um, micro market is the local business that services the local <clears throat> residents of a community, right? And what they talked about are for those businesses that had excellent service deliverable, and they coupled that with being ever present in the marketplace digitally and made the purchasing decisions for people they serve easy because they could find them online, they could interact with them that way. Those businesses were exponentially growing. The businesses that were suffering were businesses that were conducting themselves the old fashioned way. And when they broke down what that meant, they were talking about people that just have a website. You know, how many businesses do you know that have a website that haven't even been updated in five years? So if you want exponential growth, then you got to take advantage of all the different ways to communicate in your marketplace. And Grant talks about this. Better known will always beat best. There's a lot of business owners that think, because I'm the best, I'm going to own this market, and they don't. It sounds to me like what you do, or I know what you do, and this is why we're sitting here having this conversation, is you are one of the unique businesses that I found that actually specializes in taking those micro market, those mom and pop businesses that can't afford all the digital resources and assets and videographers and, and producers and cameras and all the stuff, podcasts, like they don't know how to do all that stuff. But yet, and if they want to own and dominate their market and to even be significant in the future and be relevant, they have to learn to do that. And you're one of the few businesses that I have found personally that so eloquently puts all that together for the little guy to saturate and dominate their local market, no matter what they do for a profession. Well, there's, there's so many places to start. And, you know, when we say micro market, it's not just about small business owners, you know, and, 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 and when I say business, I mean, sometimes when I think about small business, we may think about multiple people within that business. Yep. But also when you were saying that, what come to my mind was, what about the plumber? What about the realtor? What about the loan officer? What about the financial advisor? You know, the, the pressures and the demands to be omnipresent and to really show up in your market today are extraordinary. If you think about it, the pressures of an individual today from a sales perspective are, hey, guess what? You know, w w We did X amount of sales last year. In order to continue growing on that trajectory, I've got to come up with new innovative ways to keep on showing up. Now, that's a mission by itself, let alone how am I going to be a, a writer? How am I going to be a digital marketing specialist? How am I going to be a social media guru? How am I going to learn all those skills? And then furthermore, even though I know I need to do all those things, and I should be doing those things, everything that I do, every time I go and you know get a graphic designer or a web designer, or I try and write some of this content, or I try and just show up myself on social, guess what? It's taking me away from doing what I should be doing, which is spending high frequency time in front of my clients, talking to my clients building that rapport. And so it's really overwhelming. And what we saw is a, a an area in the market where we're really good at what we do, 
Okay, we we're really good at, at creating content and, and uh, all the visuals, all the the kind of uh, cotton candy. We call it candy floss in England, but cotton candy, <laughs> all the all the fluffy nice stuff. And we said, well, hang on a second. Why don't we just pull all those components in together, so that that loan officer, that that financial advisor, that realtor didn't have to worry about doing that, and that really looked like a badass in their market. You know, there's a great book. Uh, Ray Oldenburg read, wrote it. It's called the 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 Good Great Place, and and what it is is a concept where you have three places: you have home, you have work, and you have a third place. And I think the that old model w w it was written way before the conception of social mm -hmm. media. But social media is your third place. That is where you're going. Why is it? Because that's where everybody else is showing up. And I think sometimes when we talk about, you know, these micro markets and the management and all these things, and we use all these, these terms, we just got to get real simple with everything and just yep. say, look, we're a bunch of cavemen and women living in caves. How are we going to make something that we can go around to all the other caves and impress them without getting too complex in that? So I, I think it absolutely is a huge, huge opportunity for people to really understand how they could utilize not just my company, but somebody like us to actually alleviate them from having to do some of these things that they should be doing, but they're not going to be great at doing it. And, and, and therefore, they don't do it, right? Like we manage a thousand locations across the country and we run all their digital assets. Um, when I did the talk to all uh, our leading uh, partners and I asked them back in February, how many of you are actively using Instagram? Only like 20% of their people even had Instagram loaded on their phone. I mean, it's crazy. Here they're in a professional community. They're doctors. They're working with people all day long. They're trying to get referrals from other doctors, from insurance companies, from everyone else. And yet they're invisible. And I just, for me, I was the same thing because I was just so focused on what I was doing all last year. Once I realized the power of things like Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and all the things that were there, but I wasn't using them, and how many connections I've made just in the last six months and people direct messaging me and I can look at who they are and I can see what their history is and I can see what they're doing and you can even transact with them online. It is insane the leverage and the power of properly using social media and yet I'm a pretty sophisticated business guy. I, I would agree no with clue. that. I would definitely agree with that. I, I had no clue up until I actually started working with Instagram in January and February. And and even how to build your presence or how to market yourself or what to say, what to do. Like all that, we have spent so much time with Natalie going to so many different experts to try to understand it just so we had awareness. I, I just don't, I think without a business like yours, and I think it's a golden opportunity because if you look at what the the big the big research companies in the Bain Capitals and the KKR, you know, you, I'm talking about global impact players that know markets. Amazon, Walmart, Costco, big time successes. They talk about the fact that they need these digital strategies for them to survive. So. Walk through a little bit like what gave you the idea of creating a platform that business owners, salespeople, like you, were, like you, you know, a lot of solopreneurs, solopreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs, people that even inside their own company. Like if, you, if you're not going to talk about what you're doing and the impact it makes, then how can anybody follow you? Like what was the idea to go create this platform? Well, if I'm candid, the idea was quite simply this. I'm a business person, and originally when we we first started the business, we got really lucky in the beginning. We 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 landed a, a huge insurance company, and we were we got a contract very soon in in our process to actually to to service 120 of their locations nationwide. And what was happening is that we would go to these these companies, and we would create these beautiful headshots and email signatures and videos. And of course, what was happening is that the individuals had never seen themselves look like this before. They'd mm -hmm. never seen themselves look so good. Why? Because we were from Hollywood and we knew how to create a really 
amazing looking headshot because we started off in the film business and we were taking pictures of actors and and if you don't take great pictures of actors guess what they don't get opportunities to audition mm. so the way we looked at it was we were like well, hang on a second if we're creating images for these actors to get opportunities to be in front of casting directors and agents that could potentially lead them through to another opportunity what's the difference between creating it for a business person to get them the opportunity to close their deal so that was kind of the correlation between the two that we could take a business person and make them look like a celebrity just by creating great looking content and then of course there's a psychological reason too if 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 there's a reason why you've got a great looking set here and that you know everything looks a certain way because what it communicates is success and trust okay otherwise it wouldn't look so nice and people wouldn't have as much perhaps they wouldn't uh, validate you as much yeah well it's the same it's the same kind of thing we were looking for validation all right so we were looking for how do we create super high quality content that people could really look good and feel good about themselves but what happened was that we create the image we create the video we create the email signature and somebody rolls it out on social media a few times and guess what they get a bunch of likes because in their little microcosm people see them and they're like oh my god brandon you look amazing I their love microcosm in their micro market in their micro market exactly <laughs> <laughs> fun with words so you know they, they 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 would be this local celebrity and they would feel really good for about a week and then they come back to us and say well hey we need more video content and we were like yeah we're not flying out to jasper wyoming to create one video i'm it's just not possible so we said well what do we do? And uh, I never forget the, the real, the, the moment where I really thought of this was, it was in January, 2016, I was in Austin, and one of the C-suites of this insurance company, uh, she was on a call with her and I were on a call. And she said, Daniel, listen, we, we really love the, the headshots and the videos, but what next? And I normally have an answer for everything. <laughs> and I didn't have an answer. And I was like, hey, listen, I, 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 I didn't want to BS her. I said, I don't know. And I know what's next. You know, Brandon, it took me uh, almost two years to figure out what it was. And, and the catalyst for what it was was actually me sitting down and watching Netflix. Mm. And, and I remember flicking through Netflix and, and I was looking at, you know, oh, dramas and comedies. And, and then I just suddenly... The, it just clicked. I was like, well, hang on a second. What is the difference between, you know, if, if, you've got, if, if you are a business owner and you're listening to this right now, and I don't care what business, even if you're an, uh, what do you call it, a solo, 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 solo preneur, yeah, whatever, whatever it is, you got to think to yourself, you need to broadcast yourself on a daily basis. Right? And, and there's a very simple formula for, for influence. It's awareness plus frequency equals influence okay awareness plus frequency equals influence what is awareness awareness is content it's videos it's podcasts it's ebooks it's articles it's quizzes frequency is quite simply how many times are you putting this in front of the people that can make a difference to your business awareness plus frequency equals influence that's what we're trying to create for people and programming where somebody doesn't have to think about what they're uh, posting on a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Thursday or a Friday. Programming alleviates them from having to worry about it for a number of reasons. It alleviates them from having to do the, you know, the going out and creating all of this content. But it also gives them the confidence to know that they're showing up with that formula. And there's one more thing I want to add, and this is something that I always bring to every pitch meeting. And we spoke about this the other day. Mm -hmm. You know, depending on the product or service that you're selling, you have every salesperson, I don't care if they're a plumber, roofer, HVAC, realtor, financial advisor, wh whoever. Medical doctor. Medical doctor. <coughs> dentist. It goes yep. on. Okay. Your window of opportunity to actually make a sale is all relative to the emotional and the financial commitment that individual has to make, okay? For example, Starbucks. That window is open every single day, all right? I could be sold a cup of coffee, or in my case, a cup of tea, <laughs> every single day, right? 
that's a, that window is wide open and it's swinging open day and night. If I'm buying a pair of sneakers, depending on how flashy I am, it's probably gonna be every couple of months, right? Well, when we start getting down to mortgages and cars, that and braces and plastic surgery and you go deeper and deeper and yes. deeper. Yes, higher the emotional commitment, higher the financial yep. equip, uh, uh, commitment, the smaller the window of opportunity. So my question really is this to anyone, any one of those business people, if you've identified yourself as that, two questions. One of which is, what it, are you standing outside the window of opportunity when it opens? That's number one. Are you standing outside the window of opportunity when it opens? Number two is quite simply this. What have you been doing to deserve to stand outside that window? And if you don't know, you better do something about it because there are people very aggressively trying to figure that out. And those people that are trying to figure it out are engaging in our platform to do that because they realize that they need to take a seat at the table. So it's, it's all about creating an opportunity for people to not have to think and worry uh, about becoming influential in, in this like really influencer dominated world by bringing real value to the people they're trying to prospect. And, and you know, the old idea that you can run a Yelp page ad or have a nice looking website with your picture on it, and that's going to drive people or influence people to want to do business with you is, is such a broken idea. And yet people, a lot of people I work with, they have credentials, right? It could be a doctor, it could be an expert in something and uh, the best accountant in town or the best lawyer in town or an expert, you know, segment the lawyers. You might be great on property development or you might be great in wills and estates and trusts and so there, or business. So there's all these different segments. And yet when someone says, I need a lawyer, that in itself is for what is the next question. And if if you're not putting yourself out there as I am the best lawyer in town for if you want to develop your property, or I'm the best lawyer in town for divorce, or I'm the best lawyer in town for wills, trusts, and estates, then as a normal person living in a community, the only way, you got to go back to the old caveman. You started this cave. You got to yell, hey, does anybody know somebody they trust? And you got to go find them yourself. And yet you have these amazing people with these great credentials who do great work, but they're not harnessing the testimonials from their current clients. They're not posting information on where to find them and who they are and why they're an expert and what they can do to help you. Like they're just sitting in their office, staring at the phone, wanting it to ring. Right, I, I just had this funny visual as you said that. So let's go back into the cavemen because yeah. it's kind of funny. So here, here we have, we have two types of cavemen, okay? We have the caveman who every single day at five o'clock as the sun is coming down over the cave village, you just see him dragging a carcass behind him, right? Every day, he's just dragging that carcass behind him, okay? Then you have another caveman who's talking about dragging the carcass behind him. Which caveman do I want to go and hunt with? You know? Yeah. There's, a, there's, the, there's the sayers and there's the doers. And, it's, and it's, it's really not rocket science. It's just demonstrating what you do. That caveman at five o'clock who's dragging the carcass behind him, he's doing. So, <laughs> so here's the thing, Daniel. You got all these people that actually, you have these, well, let me rephrase this. You have a group of people that are like just blissfully unaware. And they just think their business is going to do well because they think that they're really good at what they do. Would you agree or disagree that if your parent needed a service and they were concerned about it, so they told you about it as their son. So they call you from wherever they're at and they're saying, son, we have to go do this thing. And you said, oh, okay, well, who are you going to go see? Like, what? how did you find this person? And they tell you and you go, okay, well, let me, let, me, let me do a little look online. And you went online and you found a website that's 20 years old and you didn't find any testimonials. And you didn't find any stories online about them. You didn't hear any. What would be your level of confidence advising your parents that this is the person they should go to, high or low? I'm, I'm obviously, I'd have a very low level of confidence. Yeah. And I think the other thing to add to that is also that people should start to think about. And you know, when people listen to this, that there's going to be a, 
probably a lot of confusion as well because trying to make sense of some something that is somewhat complex but not really but we also need to think about accessibility to those individuals too and you know going online and looking at somebody's website you know i know people that don't just look at someone's website they're going to go and look at your instagram page yep. you know engage do i want to do business with that person yep. it just all comes down to trust and then how we say for example i do go to the website and it's a great website then the next level of thinking is i don't want to call you okay because i'm introverted or i'm busy or i'm whatever i just want to get on my phone and just or you don't want to embarrass your parents or you can't call them because the hipaa you can't talk to them about it so, so, something yep. yeah. yeah but how do i how do i engage with those services without actually having to call them or email them you know now and and, and that's what we started to realize too we're like well look we don't want uh, <laughs> our our clients having to deal with that. We just want appointments popping up on their calendar. You know, you think yeah. about the way that we communicate today. People are more likely to, you know, to text you about something serious than 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 call you. And yep. and I think we got to look into that and say, well, how are we how how accessible are businesses above? And, like, n not only are we what are we doing to get people there, but once we've got them there, how do we convert them? And I think that's something that that. The, I hope the listenership is thinking about how am I, how easy is it for that individual to do business with me? I wonder actually how many business owners out there have actually gone through and 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 said, wait, I'm a consumer. Let me go through my own experience. You know, one of the things that whenever whenever I go into these offices, I, I you know I would use a series of tactics to kind of evoke some fear fear of missing out and and inadequacies and things like that and i and i would say to people hey when is the last time you googled yourself like just go and google yourself what do you find do you trust what you see like really are you an expert why would you do business with you and i think that you know you you spoke about just a moment ago you said you know there's a lot of people that are blissfully unaware if you feel like you are blissfully unaware Go and do that right now. Pause this podcast and go, go and Google, Google, go and Google yep. yourself. And you tell me whether you would trust me, whether you would trust you. Because so many people don't do that, man. And, you know, it's interesting that we had our start off in, in, in the financial services industry. Cause, cause, and, and why? Well, what we found, and this is one of my aha epiphany moments, is that I get to this event in Vegas. There's 20,000 people at this conference. I had no idea 20,000 financial advisors would all <laughs> get, to get, get, to get together. Yeah, of course, yeah. now I know I'm totally naive and, and, and now I know that's not the case. But I arrive at this place and I started to realize, I was like, wait a second, all of these people need headshots. And then I thought to myself, and some of them were trying to sell me financial services products, right? As any good salesperson sure. should do, right? So you can imagine how much life insurance I have and, yeah. <laughs> and, and uh, we get offered buy-sell agreements on a daily basis and God knows what. But anyway, so what was really interesting to me is that I would, I would Google their name to see if they needed a headshot. And I would look at these individuals and I was like, you know what? How on earth could this individual expect me to invest in them? Forget the company, invest in them if they don't even have a professional headshot. What yeah. does that say about your business? And guess what? That's what's going on today. That is what's going on today. People are making clear judgments about whether they trust you on the way that you look and you feel. And are you, have you invested in your business? I mean, again, it's the caveman thing. Do we want at five o'clock the caveman who is invested in hunting and has proven that he can hunt or do we want to be the caveman that just sits on the bluff and talks about it? Going hungry. Yeah. And I think that's the confusing part is that people don't realize, um, especially as the population just keeps incrementally aging, the people that are becoming their, their target audience in another three, five, 10 years, they're used to doing all their engagement digitally. They're, they're not used to picking up the phone and calling and asking for an appointment. If, I know people that if they had to pick up the phone and call and ask for an appointment, they'd be like, I'm not going to that place. If I can't find a, a, a online calendar or schedule myself in or text somebody, like I'm not going to make phone calls, right? 
And there are businesses that still today, the only way to communicate with the business is to phone call. It's, make, it's like, it'd be as ridiculous as me telling you, hey, I, I've got a contract I'm going to send over to you. What's your fax number? Like, if somebody said that to me, I would literally laugh at them. Like, who uses fax anymore? It's take amazing a, how many people still use fax, though. It is. It is amazing. Yeah. Just take a picture with your phone and text it to me. Like, you know, it's it's just, it's crazy to think about where technology has gone, but the correlation between confidence of if they're not using technology to communicate who they communicate who they are, what they are, why they're great, with testimonials to support that, if they're not smart enough to do that, then do I really trust w- that what they're doing is cutting edge and and the best in town? Like that that that's an instant correlation mm-hmm. between um, should I or should I not? And and you asked a great question for every business owner that's listening to this or a person who's making their own presence in somebody else's organization and and building their personal brand. Because the one thing that all the experts have said is that the, one of the biggest market opportunities in any small market is for people to offer a personal services uh, brand that fulfills solving other people's problems for. And, and you think, in those same markets, you have legitimate businesses that legitimately solve big problems, and yet you don't know where they're at, and they're not putting themselves out there. So I had a question in there, but I, I lost it. So so I think it's important for – oh, I know what I was going to say. So for those of you that, like you said, that are listening to this, just do yourself a favor. Hit pause on the podcast. Google yourself. Look at – what news is on you or your business, and just pause for a minute and ask the question. If, same question you asked, this is I'm repeating what you said because I think it was like, I'm just processing how impactful that is. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being I would definitely, based on what I see, be running in there with high level of trust, one being I wouldn't do business with them. Rank yourself on how you're presenting yourself online. How deep is your content? How good are your testimonials? <clears throat> Not just a couple of Google reviews, but people actually so inspired or excited that they're online doing and saying things. How much are you using your Instagram to get your stories out there? Like, ask yourself honestly. And then if you rank yourself low, no need to worry. My buddy here with his business is going to help you or give you guidance <laughs> and advice. Listen, how did you come up with the name Wow Me? Like I, I, I've been dying. I saw your shirt today. Yeah. And I've been dying to ask you because for me, just when I look at it, I keep chuckling to myself because it's actually a brilliant name. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, before we formed Wow Me as it exists today, we were essentially headshot photographers in Los Angeles. And one thing we did really good is take really amazing headshots and it was amazing how you know you you would you would take a headshot of a corporate individual and you've got to imagine like headshots for corporations were really really drab like you're talking like the funky 80s back and people still have those pictures on their website oh my god it's unbelievable it's it's still unbelievable because i think to myself the glamour shot yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) it's (laughs) terrible so what when what we would do when we would present the headshots to people is we would say here's your before and here's your after <laughs> here's your before and here's your after and across the board everyone would say wow 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 i can't believe that's me wow i can't believe that's me and we would continually hear that and as we were trying to come up with the name for the company we we wanted you know of course you like google what 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 is google like how did they come up with google you know all all these different names that they have and so we were trying to like what do we call it some funny name like that but we really just wanted it to be the way that people feel and even when you say wow you smile wow that's me you know and i think that when you're a company what we're doing is it, it it's 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 actually more than just programming and sometimes when i'm talking about the company i get so emotional about it because over the over the past five years, we've literally helped thousands and thousands and thousands of salespeople realize something about themselves that maybe they didn't see before. That they have a voice and that they can be seen and they can be heard. And when you when you do give that 
opportunity to somebody, it it feels really good, and it feels like wow me, you know. Yeah. So that that's how I I, I, do, I do want to touch actually a little bit upon what you were saying about when somebody Google's themselves and they yeah. have a look. You know, I think a lot of times when you hear these type of wonderful educational resources, like that, well, hopefully it's educational to yeah. people. <laughs> so w when when people listen to these things, so they watch these videos and they're inspired. And, and oh, you know what, I'm gonna Google myself. Well, what's gonna happen is this, okay? And if you're doing this right now, you're, you're probably gonna go through this experience. You're gonna get online and you're gonna Google yourself. And just like Brandon said, you're gonna rank yourself from, from one to 10, whatever it is. The question is, what do you do next? What do you do next? Because you can be all fired up by listening to us talk about these things. What do you do next? One of the things that I've really taken away from our last couple of days with each other is the power of accessibility. And so for anyone who is Googling themselves and they say, you know what? I don't trust myself. I don't trust the image that's portrayed or I could do better. If you're one of those people, you need to align yourself with people that give you access to people like Brandon, to give you access to people like Wowme, people that have, who know more about what you're trying to do because it's, uh, it's not a great place to, to do that and be left with nothing to do. And I just wanna say that because I hate, you know, whenever I watch a great documentary, yep. I feel so inspired to go out and do whatever it is. And the documentary ends and I'm like, whoa, oh, yeah. what do I do next? <laughs> like I'm so fired up, you know. I wanna what, be the caveman. Yeah. How do I go get that thing? How do I, do that? I don't know how to do it. So, you know, obviously you're an amazing resource. You know so many people that could help people. Uh, obviously your trainings and things like that and, and the type of people that you're associated with can help people. And I would just encourage people to really engage with you to ask, you know, what next? How do I do this next? And and don't just Google yourself and feel empty and lost. Think about how do I align myself with people that can give me accessibility to do something about what you just felt. Because guess what? Every single time you Google yourself and you feel like that, one of your potential prospects is doing that right now. Yep, you're, you've missed. You've missed. You've lost. You've lost. And then guess what? They're going to move on to the next one who probably has a whammy ecosystem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or they, yeah. they're conscientious about how they're, social, how they're online and running their social media. So to your point, look, anybody that listens to my show that, that, that is, is like, how do I do that? You can just DM me. Um, or you can go to cardoneventures.com and the, you know all the boot camps we run. We've got Frank Kern working with us on how to present yourself and how to write copy. We've got stuff going with you. We've got all sorts of experts, um, and we don't want to leave anybody hanging. So I think it's important. And there's, and I'll say this: someone who has spent the last better part of a year researching, and I got a, a marketing team of sixty some odd people. So it's not like I'm oblivious to my choices and options. What I will say though is, for as much great advice as there is out there, there is more bad advice. And so making sure the people you're following and listening to, find a persona, find an example of somebody in your industry that's killing it, right? If you're, I don't care what you are, if you're if you're in some kind of profession and a business owner and you're like, I, I Googled myself, dude, I'm a one. Um, Sit back and spend some energy in the evening Googling your peers or Googling national people or Googling people in your field and find people who have a massive presence. And go look at the training videos that they've built or go look at what they're doing online. Start framing in your mind like if I could picture my future self being a dominant player in social media, what does that even look like to me? Because you need to first understand what questions to ask before you just start telling people, I wanna have a great social media presence and go down all these different holes because there's a lot of different ideas about how to do stuff. I think modeling after somebody that you respect and that you think has done a fabulous job is, is always the easiest way. I call it drafting, like just follow their lead. And don't be afraid to direct message those people and say, hey, I'm new to social media. I see, I see your, your, your stuff, man, and it looks amazing. Can you give me 
any idea who I should talk to to try to do something compelling like this. It's amazing how many questions I get on social media. And if I'm sitting on the airplane, I just fire off answers, right? And people, that's the access you were talking about. Like who, who normally would get access to a guy like me or a guy like you? But if somebody direct messages us on Instagram and says, hey, I could really use your help. Don't send me a long story. Don't write me a book. Just say, I need help. I want to do this, that, or who could I talk to? Who would you recommend? And it could be something as simple as that. And that's the power of social media. Instant access to guidance and advice from people who have demonstrated they know what they're talking about. And, and I'd just like to add the keep it simple because it can be really overwhelming and it doesn't need to be. We, and I say we, you, business owners, I'm included, we can get really caught up when we, when we watch really powerful influencers and the amount of content that they're putting out there. You do not need to show up like that. Okay, yeah. for the most part, you're not running these machines that need to feed many, many, many people. You're feeding yourself. You, you, you gotta keep it simple because what happens, and I see this all the time, is information overload. Yeah. And then, and then people are confused and, and then they don't know what to do. Keep it simple. If you can only post the, so, like, look, there's many people out there that will tell you, you gotta post social media every day. We do that in our platform because we know that to be true. But guess what? If you cannot post to social media every day because you don't have the resources or you just, maybe you don't have the cash or maybe you don't have accessibility to wonderful people like Brandon and, and, and every, anyone else who's influential in that way, guess what? Just keep it really simple. Post once a week, twice a week. But here, I'm gonna give you a, a tip here. Make sure that you build a programming schedule so you don't have to think about what you're going to post on the day. Build it out. You could do this right now. I mean, honestly, people could do it right now. Just write down two posts every week for a month. Just eight posts. Just start small. And, and, and this is not – look, if you want to uh, dominate your market and, and project yourself as a, as a, as a professional – we're not talking about posting the picture. And it's okay to post an occasional picture with the dog or with the cat or out fishing. That's fine. But you're talking about be thoughtful about what Demonstrate your expertise. Less, another reminder about the caveman that's, that's walking away at 5 o'clock in the sunset. He demonstrated his expertise by dragging that carcass away to feed his family, whereas the other guy didn't. The other guy was showing pictures of him going fishing and catching butterflies. <laughs> exactly. This guy has gone out and he's, he's got the kill to feed his family. So, yes, great point. Yeah. So make sure that you're very intentional about what you're trying to do with social media. You're not just putting yourself out there to say, I live in the community. You, you want to impress upon people that you're an expert. And the more of an expert you actually are, the deeper and to differentiate yourself from your competition. Like, talk about it as much as you can. But like you said, it doesn't have to be overly complicated. Well, here we are. We're with a digital expert who's building technology to make everybody else's life easier. He's a good buddy of mine. And uh, we might be working on some things and bringing it to the marketplace together. So I'm really excited about it. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much. It's been, uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a great couple of days. And, uh, you know, just spending some time with you and, and seeing the team around you and, and what you've created is, uh, is really remarkable. And, you know, as we were driving to the studio, I, it's it, the, the 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 kind of sentence that I left with would be possibility through perspective, and I think that if anyone else, if anyone is doing the googling themselves and they're thinking about what they look like, that's one of the big takeaways that I had today. What does your future self look like? And and you can give yourself some possibility through perspective, and it may only mean just turning your head to the left just a little. Yeah, so I think I think for the team or people listening to this, um, you came in. You, you, this is the magic of getting people together. Um, if you did a one to ten scale on your perspective coming up to, before you spent two days with me relative to the opportunity in your business, and now you're doing the same measurement, how far did you move on that scale of opportunity? I would say now it's an 11 out of 10. <laughs> it's dynamically moved, shifted. It's right? dynamically shifted. I, in all honesty, I always had, I had the heart and the mind and the vision to make it 
you know, I've never had an issue with that. But like I said, it's the possibility through perspective. And when you're so ingratiated in, in, you know, it's the whole working on working in your business. Yeah. When you're in that, sometimes your perspective is clouded by your circumstances. But when you remove yourself and you change your circumstances and you change that, that vista, a whole new horizon presents itself. And, and that's what I have experienced in the last couple of days. So I would say 11 out of 10 now. Yeah. And awesome. I would probably say, I'd probably say a healthy six and a half to seven before. Yeah, but that, that's but, perfect. But, but that's still a huge movement. A, a huge, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's 50%, right? Yeah. I think that's right. I left school at 16, so I'm not sure, <laughs> but I think that's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure to spend a couple yeah. days with you, buddy. Absolutely. And thanks for coming on the show. Because I know you're heading to the airport. So thanks for joining us on the Beat Austin Show, and we'll talk to you next week.